This award is PCA's uh, highest award. It's uh, the Ronald L. Jensen Award for Lifetime Achievement. Uh, Ron Jensen, or RJ, as everybody called him, uh, made huge contributions to PCA, both in terms of intellectual capital and capital capital. Um, he, he tragically died a few years ago in a, a car accident, and we've missed his intelligence and positive spirit ever since. Uh, Ron's wife, GJ, has been a big supporter. She actually funded our first strategic plan. And GJ and the entire Jensen family have, have really had a, a huge role in where PCA is at this point. The, mo the three most recent winners of the Ronald L. Jensen Award for Lifetime Achievement are Dick Gould, who is here tonight. Bruce, Bruce Bochy, the manager of the New, uh, San Francisco Giants. And Phil Jackson, now the president of the New York Knicks. That is, uh, that's a pretty amazing lineup. Joe Ehrman belongs in that group. I first heard of Joe when Parade Magazine about eight or 10 years ago had his, him on the cover and it said, the most important coach in America. I heard of him later, uh, you know, the article said he was a former All-Pro uh, tackle with the, the Baltimore Colts, became a minister. Um, the second time I heard anything about Joe, a friend of mine who lived in Arizona sent me a videotape of Bryant Gimbel's Real Sports featuring Joe uh, and his, his team at Gilman School in Baltimore. Um, the, the, the video clip started out with Joe saying to his football players, what's our job as coaches? And these big, tough, adolescent, high school kids shouted back to love us. And then he said, what's your job as players? And they said, to love each other. And I thought, whoa, this is, this is different. <laughs> um, I think that Joe's work on false masculinity and false femininity and how sports creates stereotypes and furthers those stereotypes is among some of the most important work that anybody in this country is doing on any subject. Some of you know about Daniel Murphy. I know Ted, uh, Ted didn't you used to be the, the voice of the Mets? Daniel Murphy, second baseman for the Mets, had the gall to take paternity leave for his son. Or Actually, I'm not sure if it was a son or daughter. His, his, his child was being born. And he got blasted. Boomer Esiason said he should have made his wife get a C-section so he wouldn't miss any games. Joe was quoted in an article by Dave Zirin in The Nation magazine, and he said some things that I encourage you to, to look that up. Uh, he said some things that I really thought were so profound, and I couldn't imagine anybody else in this country saying about the importance of fathers being in the delivery room with their, with their kids and how wrongheaded it was to, to criticize Daniel Murphy, Murphy, Murphy. I also want to say that Joe's generosity is immense. He's spent innumerable hours with Positive Coaching Alliance. The last two and a half days, we had our all staff meeting and various meetings with our uh, uh, all chapter gathering, our, our uh, board members from around the country. And Joe spent almost the entire two and a half days with us and filled the emotional tanks of everybody that he, he ran in contact to. Um, we're going to start this before we have Joe come up here with a video that, uh, are we ready to run that? Let's, let's go ahead and run this video. First time I ever heard of Joe Ehrman was Real Sports HBO did a piece about the most important coach in America. I was uh, moving into my San Francisco townhouse and met the guy upstairs and he gave me a book called Season of Life. First time I became aware of Joe Ehrman was when I sent a number of my coaches to the Character Combine and as a result they brought back the Season of Life book. Well the first time I met Joe was God. It was one of those experiences that you know you realize that this is the guy that you read about. 
I felt I was meeting a, a true leader, someone who would bring up the hard subjects in front of people to start a, a good conversation. Here was a man who was communicating to his athletes that they are to love each other and he is to love them. And in that, you're not dummying down competition, you're just teaching character. It doesn't matter what group Joe's in front of. I've seen him in front of our coaches, our players. I've seen him in front of nonprofit leaders and corporate leaders. His message resonates with everyone and inspires everyone. This former star athlete has taught us that success is a testament of the depth and quality of your relationships with yourself, others, and the greater community. It's not about conquest. It's not about money. And if you think about it, it's about loving somebody. And when you love somebody and you do it the right way, no matter if it's your wife, no matter if it's your kids, you name it. When you love somebody, it's the greatest feeling in the world. He has the word love in his coaching vernacular, which is unusual. We don't think coaches talk about love. Uh, to love is great, and to be loved is even better. And Joe is loved by everyone. He's influenced my life immeasurably. He's had the courage to change the dialogue around coaching from winning at all costs to truly developing young people. The things that really stuck with me were just the way that players and coaches all treated each other as different and not really something you'd necessarily see on all football teams, but I think it's something that really helped his team and can help a lot of teams, not only in playing football, but in life in general. He's taken that model and, and showed coaches across the country that you know, it's okay to love your players and care about your players and treat them the way they should be treated and help them make a difference in society. Empathy, integrity, inclusion, justice, building community, living a life of service to others. Those are the concepts that fill Joe's playbook. When I picture what it means to be a better man and what it means to be a leader, I think of Joe Ehrman. He communicates a narrative, gives us permission to love athletes and to teach athletes to chase after the best version of themselves. You know, as the head coach, I get a lot of attaboys for being the head coach. Um, but really, the person that I am as a coach really was formed and developed by Joe. It's a coaching philosophy based on player-centeredness, what's best for that child, what's best for his family. It's a, it's a philosophy based on empathy. And when you meet a young man or a young woman who can be empathetic of those around them, you've got a future leader. We sat there one day having lunch and he looked at me and rhetorically asked, what would it look like, Jason, if every coach and every athlete in your city gave themselves to a cause that was bigger than them? Then he paused and he goes, Jason, what would it look like if every student athlete in your city left the world better than they found it? And then he gave the crescendo. What would it look like if every student in your city practiced inclusion? And then he just left it right there. It was like this dangling challenge out in front of me to chase to the horizon. Joe, congratulations on winning the PCA's Lifetime Achievement Award. The Ronald L. Jensen Award was meant for people like you. Congratulations. I cannot think of another coach, another human being out there who's more deserving of this award. You're an inspiration to me and everyone around you, and I thank you for all you've done to give back to society and your community. The impact that you've had on my life, my family's life, and my athletes' lives has been incredible. Congratulations. It means so much to me to have you as a friend and to have had you as a mentor for so many years. And I want to say thank you so much for the impact that you've made on my life and so many thousands of others. I want to tell you thank you for loving me, leading me, and letting me learn from you. The number of coaches and children and parents that you have impacted in your life coaching so far, and we still got a long way to go, has been outstanding and truly amazing. And I want to personally thank you for for loving me and our coaches and all of our kids and for being such a terrific role model. Congratulations. So, jo Joseph Campbell, Thank you.
Yeah. I want to say one Boy, more thing. You stuck that filming on me, man. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So, Joseph Campbell, Joseph Campbell wrote about myths and about the hero's journey, and he made a distinction in our society between celebrities and heroes. Joe Herman is a legitimate hero. Joe, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Deeply touched, man. Yeah, yeah. deeply touched. Well, well, I'm just uh, uh, very humbled and honored uh, to be here. That, uh, that video kind of, boy, I'm, I'm going to pull it together here. Uh, if I was in front of my team, I would cry. Uh, but I'm very honored to be here and uh, especially honored that this award would come from the Positive Coaching Alliance. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate those four coaches that uh, were the double goal winners. Uh, there's two kinds of coaches in America. There are coaches that are transactional. They understand the power, the platform, the position they have in the lives of young people, and they're going to use that to meet their needs, their values, their identity. Boy, it's always about reducing sports to some kind of X's and O's and wins and losses. The other kind of coaches that there are that were exemplified here are transformational coaches. Again, they understand the power, the platform position, and they're going to use that to change the arc of every young person's life. Uh, they're going to mentor young people. They stand up as their own, uh, on their own moral, social, ethical values, and they're going to instill that in every, uh, in every player. So I really want to congratulate them. Uh, boy, that was a terrific group. Then I want to thank PCA. I've had a wonderful time out here. And I would suspect that I'm like most of you. Uh, I've known Jim for a long time. I meet with PCA people when I travel. But I really never understood the depth and the breadth and the professionalism of that organization. Uh, I would say this to PCA. Uh, you are a sign of hope. The function of hope is to keep present realities open for future possibilities. We live in a world where tremendous numbers of people need to know that tomorrow can be different day than today. Every kid that walks out on that field the irreducible minimum for every human being is they want to be loved and they want to belong. Boy, to create a culture where young people take that hero's journey, they hear that call to adventure, to try out for a team, and always in the journey there's some wise transformational coach that helps them overcome their own self-imposed limitations, their own misunderstanding of their own value and worth, and then we treat, uh, turn them back home. So I would like to do this, though. Uh, I would like to ask the sta staff to stand up one more time. Uh, they are the heroes on this journey. And uh, boy, I tell you, they are really. An Thank you. I can't even begin to tell you how impressed I've been in the last two and a half days. Boy, with their character, the commitment, the passion they bring to this, uh, I would call it a ministry, every single uh, day. Boy, I sat there listening to the board members. They've got metrics. They're trying to figure out how to scale this thing. A dollar invested in PCA is leveraged. Uh, uh, it's added value uh, all the way through. So I'm tremendously pleased and honored to be with them. You know, when Jim called me and said, I wanted to give you a lifetime achievement award, I was thinking, man, I'm, I'm not, I wasn't too comfortable with that. I feel like I got a long way to go. And, then my bro body broke down yesterday, and uh, I don't know how far the journey is, but uh, I, wanna, I really want to thank them. You know, people always say, well, why sports? You think of the role that sports plays in America today. Sports will engage more individuals, more families, more communities in a shared activity than any cultural activity, organization, or religion in this country. It is the secular religion of America. And right now, there is a transmission of values that's not healthy for the development of boys and the men and girls and the women. Boy, it's been reduced to a win-at-all-cost kind of mentality that absolutely serves no one. You know, sports have always, historically in this country, they've always been a metaphor for social change. You think of the roles that athletes and sports and coaches have played in bringing and addressing some of America's most difficult challenges. You think about the millions of immigrants that have gotten off boats, integrated into American culture through sports. Every ethnic group that's ever been ghettoized, sports has be, uh, created a pathway out.
When you talk about civil rights, human rights, uh, uh, women's rights, you think of the role that sports has played. And what PCA is trying to do is trying to redeem sports. Redeem sports as a tool, a tool to build the moral, social, ethical values of every participant, a tool to help address, uh, uh, make better citizens, to start changing some of America's most deeply entrenched problems. So you think about people like Jackie Robinson, 20 years before the institution of civil rights, integrating uh, uh, baseball and America. You think about people like John Carlos, Tommy Smith, 68 Olympics, proclaiming not only racial inequity in America, but around the globe as well. Title IX is now 41 years old. That was uh, created to give girls opportunities to play in sports. That not only gave women equity in sports, it started to shatter glass ceilings all over corporate America. You think of the role that the international sports community played in dismantling apartheid. And then when prisoner Mandela became President Mandela, he started to use sports to reconcile a broken, divided nation, much like PCA is trying to do today. You know, and in my own work, I've always thought that my job was kind of help prepare the movement. And in the last two days, I've come to realize PCA is the movement in this country. I don't think there's a more important youth sports organization in this country uh, than PCA. Uh, they are signs of hope, they are agents of hope, and going to take every field, every court, every pool, and make sure that is a place of redemption, a place of transformation. Every pool, every court, every field ought to be considered holy space. It's sacred space, because this is where you start transforming young boys and young girls to be better citizens, to be better husbands, fathers, uh, wives, husbands, uh, uh, mothers, partners as well. So I'm tremendously pleased to be here, and I, I would just say uh, uh, and encourage you, each and every one of you. I think sometimes when you maybe live in a city, you're too close to an organization, really sometimes you don't get to see the breadth or the depth of what is taking place. But they're a sign of hope. And I'll close with this, and I'll leave this as kind of an ongoing uh, gift to you. So I think one of the great challenges in America today is all of us need to sit and contemplate and reflect. Well, we're so busy. We get up in the morning, you grab some caffeine, you are out the door. You got job responsibilities, come home, family responsibilities, and there's almost no time to just sit and reflect and contemplate. You know, Aristotle once said the three components of a virtuous person are friendship, justice, and contemplation. And when you think about that, you'll never deepen your own personal relationships if you don't think about your needs and the needs of others. You'll never understand the wasted human potential, the unnecessary suffering that an unjust, unfair, uninclusive society creates. Socrates once said the most, two most important venues to create a just society in America were the gymnasium and the symphony hall. Both of them are about the integration of mind, body, and spirit. Life is a team sport. So I'm tremendously pleased and honored. And I would just challenge you when you go home tonight, in order to sit and contemplate, and think about the potential power of, of sports that we had 20 years ago that's missing in America today, I would challenge you to go like a Google search engine. And when you get there, put the number 100 in there and then write the words greatest speeches, 100 greatest speeches. It'll take you to a site that has what it considers the 100 greatest speeches that have ever been recorded in English. And you can listen to Winston Churchill leading a nation at war a John F. Kennedy's inaugural address. Two of Dr. Martin Luther King's speeches are there as well. And when you listen to these speeches, you'll see that every one of them is about two fundamental things. One, they're all about our relational responsibility to other human beings. We are our brother's brothers. We are our sister's sisters. We have responsibility locally, nationally, and globally. The second thing you'll see that every one of these speeches is about is commitment to a cause, that all of us have a responsibility to give back to make the world more fair, more just, uh, uh, more inclusive. And my favorite out of all of these speeches, and by the way, that relationships, commitment to a cause, that's the definition of a team. A team is nothing more than a set of relationships for a cause. It's got common purpose, performance goals and objectives, there's some kind of mutually accountable work ethic, but it's always built on the trust, the respect, the integrity, and the dignity of every player. And every great team I've ever played for, every great team I've ever coached, has always been great because of those two reasons. Players learn how to build relationships, authentic relationships, learn how to depend on and be dependable for. 
Second thing is they learn how to bring their minds, their bodies, their spirit, and make a commitment to that team. Relationships and a cause. So my favorite out of all of these speeches was given by Elie Wiesel. Elie Wiesel is a German concentration camp survivor. He wrote the book Night. And when President Clinton was in the White House, he invited Wiesel to speak to dignitaries from all over the world. And you can hear Wiesel step up to the microphone. And he lets the audience know that on the very next day, would have been 47 years to the day that he had been liberated from a Nazi concentration camp by American soldiers. And while he had no English language at the time, he said he could look into the pupil of those soldiers' eyes and reflect it back with all the misery, all the inhumanity, the suffering that he had experienced. And he said, you know, the one hope that we had, the one hope that allowed us to live through the day, go to bed at night, and even think about confronting another day, was the hope and the belief that once the world found out once the world understood the suffering taking place inside that ghetto, they just knew the world would come rushing through the deliverance. And they expected that to happen tomorrow or the next day or the day after that. And Wiesel says in this speech that his greatest disappointment, almost surpassing the experience of a Nazi concentration camp, uh, uh, of the Nazi concentration camp, was to re-enter the world and to find out the world knew and did almost nothing about it. And Wiesel says the greatest problems in the world are apathy and indifference. And whenever you're apathetic and indifferent to the pain and plight of people all around you, that's always to take sides with the oppressor and deepen the pain of the victim. Wiesel says, you know, the opposite of life is not death. It's living unconcerned, disconnected from other human beings. He said the opposite of love is not hate. It's when you have people around you get offer hope or a hand or some kind of help, too. He said the opposite of faith is not heresy. It's when you claim a higher power on the vertical and then discount horizontal responsibilities. I think every one of us knows in here, boy, what's taking place in sports in America today. There is far too much transaction. The social contract between adults taking care of responsibility is not only broken in sports, but it's broken in America as well. We're the richest, most powerful nation in the history of the world. But if you paint a picture of poverty, neglect, and abuse in this country, it's a picture of a child. One out of five children live uh, at or below poverty uh, in this country. So as I said at the beginning, uh, PCA is a sign of hope. And I would say every one of you, uh, you can be agents of hope. The enemies of hope are always whenever we accommodate to the world's values, whenever we're silent, whenever we're ap apathetic. So on behalf of PCA, I would like to invite each and every, uh, thank each and every one of you as supporters, as contributors. I thank you for not being apathetic, not being indifferent. Boy, being committed to make a world that every kid can walk on that field and understand their own inherent value, worth, human potential, irregardless of their athletic ability. Boy, that is the role of sports in America today. And I would say PCA is leading the charge. I don't think there's a more important youth sports organization in, the, in this country, perhaps in the world, than PCA. So I'm tremendous honor, uh, honored and humbled to be uh, uh, selected for this. But I want to thank Jim, the staff, and the board for the, for the commitment make, they make every single day to build a better world, a world more fair or more just, inclusive, so that sports can become a tool of transformation in America. So thank you very much. It's been a tremendous pleasure to be with you. Thank you. I'm going to have my picture with somebody. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. My name is Tina Sire, and I'm PCA's Chief Impact Officer. I've been lucky enough to be with PCA for 14 years, and I'm your closer for tonight. If you're anything like me, um, the days of Giants torture with the closers who made that ninth inning as long as possible are the bygone days, and we are into quick wins, preserve the win, three outs, and get out of there. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. 
Um, a long time ago in, D in Denver, Jim Thompson and I were in front of 1,200 youth sports coaches. The opener was John Elway. Um, I don't think I've ever felt that nervous until tonight trying to follow somebody like Joe Ehrman. Um, what an honor it is to share a stage with someone like Joe Ehrman. Before PCA, I was lucky enough to play field hockey at Stanford University. Thank you. And I'm trying to get field hockey said at least a dozen times tonight at this dinner. Um, one of the things that was tough for me is my whole life since third grade, I'd played soccer. And at Stanford at that time, Julie Foudy was there playing. And I would go to the soccer games, and I'd see Julie playing. And I would think, gosh, I would love the opportunity to play on the same soccer team with Julie Foudy. What a leader she is. What a creator from the midfield, setting everyone else up for success. And, um, and I thought, gosh, I'm never going to get the chance to be a teammate of Julie Foudy. And as I sat in this audience tonight, I thought, oh my gosh, it's finally happened. I'm now a teammate of Julie Foudy's. Um, and, and I actually believe that everyone here tonight, we are teammates in the PCA movement. We are all part of the PCA team. And um, when, I, when I think back and I think of all the teammates that I've ever had, I'm not sure I've ever been part of such a talented group as the one we have here tonight and such a dedicated group. Um, some other PCA teammates to be able to call Joe Ehrman a teammate who's been with our staff for the last two days, to be able to call Ted Robinson a teammate. Um, uh, Ted's done for tonight, our MC. He did a great job. Let's hear it for Ted Robinson. <laughs> Someone else I want to call a teammate, Eden Epner. How many 18-year-olds could get up here and stand up here and give that speech? Incredible. <laughs> And, and I can't end this evening without recognizing our captain, Jim Thompson. Uh, I, sometimes when I'm talking to my mom, I say, I can't believe so early in my career I got to find something like PCA that I could dedicate a career to where it does not even feel like work. The stuff that I get to do every day, I feel like getting to change the culture of youth sports and make it a better place for kids doesn't even feel like work. So at PCA, on our team, our collective team, we're about so much more than just the scoreboard and putting points on the scoreboard. We're about giving every child a positive character building youth sports experience. We used to talk about this just being in the United States. Um, I had the chance to be at a conference recently where there were people from Pakistan, people from China, um, people from England, and they said, Tina, we need PCA in our country. And I was like, all right, we're gonna start here, but eventually we're gonna take over the world with our positive coaching movement. And I wanna tell you tonight, I've never been as excited about the PCA movement as I am right now. We are poised for explosive growth. The people we have and the great plans we have for growth with a huge thank you and a hats off to another one of my wonderful teammates from Cal Berkeley, Doug Galen. Thank you so much for your leadership in this plan. I'm reaching across the aisle from Stanford to Cal on that one. Um, one thing that we need, and um, there's, you know, so Dave Shapiro said Eden Epner was going to be our first female president. I think there's probably someone out there who might disagree with that. Some of you think her name's Hillary. Um, but in fact, maybe I could have my first slide. I think that our first female president's actually here tonight. <laughs> And, and I think it might just be Julie Foudy. And here we have the 2020 Person of the Year, US President Julie Foudy, using positive coaching to, to reach across the aisle and bring our country together. So Julie, I'm, I'm behind you. Bring positive coaching as the norm to this country. Thank you, Julie, for your work here tonight. And this past fall, even though I've been at this for 14 years, the importance of PCA came into the sharpest focus for me that it has in my entire career here, as I have my son, who's in kindergarten, decide he was going to play soccer. And that email went out to all the parents saying, who's interested in coaching the soccer team? And I thought, well, I've been doing this for a long time. I could help coach. And so I raised my hand. And I said, I'll be an assistant. Well, those of you who've done that before know exactly what happens. <laughs> Tina, great, you're gonna be our head coach. Right, so, so I went out and here I've coached at the college level, I've coached Olympic development. I went out to my first practice with five and six year old boys and I don't think I'd ever been that nervous going to a practice. And to be honest with you, I went out and here are my 10 little guys all going in 10 different directions and what was really stressing me out is on the sideline were all their parents, right? 
and they were watching me. And I thought, you know what? If their teacher misspells a word on the board or doesn't say something quite right, none of us parents see it. But if I don't do a great job in this practice, I'm going to feel judged by these parents. I'm going to feel stressed. So what did I do? I went to my PCA toolkit. And I said, I know how to handle this. I have PCA tools for this. I got the parents together. And I said, I want you guys to know my number one goal for this season is that your kids love soccer so much that they're yanking on you to go to practice. They can't wait to go to games. And they can't wait to come back and play next season. That's my number one goal. And yes, I want to teach skills. I want to advance your child and make him a better soccer player. We're going to do both those things this season. And the next thing I said is, all of you guys on the sideline, next practice, bring your running shoes because this isn't rocket science and you're going to help me next practice. And they did. And it was wonderful. And I got to live and see the impact of PCA where the parents started coming to me two weeks into the season saying, Tina, Theo now wants to wear his soccer uniform to school the day of practice. Um, and I said, OK. You know, so we started wearing our uniforms to practice. We wore them on the weekend. Um, and it really proved to me um, just how easy it is to implement these tools. And now I have a lot of my friends who are dads who are coaching t-ball for the first time. And I'm getting the emergency emails. Tina, the t-ball season is going into the toilet. I need your help. I don't know what to do. I need PCA principles and tools. I fire those resources back. Things like at the end of a game, when the boys are together, going around the circle and simply saying, Terrell, what did you see one of your teammates do well today? And this five-year-old thinks about it, right? And he gives a specific positive about a teammate, and everybody lights up. We go around the circle. I have the parents come in. They stand around us at the end of the game. We go around and we ask the parents, what specific positive did you see today, Doug? Right? And the parents are giving that. And it's the kind of culture that we want to create, not just here, but across this country and eventually across the world. Um, so, so for Nathan's team goals, we wanted to improve as soccer players and have fun. Like my next slide here, and I want to bring this up one more time, um, the big, hairy, audacious goal that we have in our PCA map of 26 chapters within the next five years, 17 million youth athletes, 125, 125 PCA staff. Let's hear it for this goal, because with you guys as teammates, we can do this. So, so my bureaucratic note to end the evening is PCA is going green. So please, Vanessa, leave your auction paddle and your name tag on your table. We're going to collect those and reuse those. You can leave your auction paddle and your name tag on the table. And um, if you are generous enough tonight to bid on an item on your way out, we have checkout outside. You can go ahead and swipe your card and pay for your auction item on the way out. And I just want to close with two more sentences. And I just want to thank you guys for so much for being my teammates in the PCA movement. I've played on a lot of teams, whether I was in third grade with my dad as my coach on an AYSO soccer team, or if I was in college playing for Cheryl Johnson with a prolific goal scorer named Sarah Sanders, who I think is in the room tonight. Sarah, where are you? My college teammate. Thank you. One of the best scorers in Stanford history on the field hockey pitch. Um, I don't know that I've ever played on a team as talented as the team that sits in the seats tonight. And I hope you guys feel really proud to be part of this team. Um, I can't think of anyone I'd rather go into competition with. And most importantly, I can't think of a more important competition that we need to win. So thank you very much for being here tonight. And I hope to see you next year. Thank you.